Hey, Raindrops. Yes, I am going on tour. Reality with the King tour is coming to a city near you. We are kicking things off in New Jersey with the queen of Jersey, baby, Teresa Judice, on Saturday, April 13th at the White Eagle. On Monday, April 22nd, I am doing a live Messy Mondays with the one, the only, Tamar Braxton in Atlanta at City Winery. On Thursday, April 25th, I am going to California, the OC baby, with a very special guest, Teddy Mellicamp at Irvine Improv. That is, again, Thursday, April 25th. For all my mothers, darling, yes, on Mother's Day, I am celebrating all the mothers. Come party with the king, honey, and the cast of Love and Marriage DC. Just the women, though. Mm-hmm-hmm. Ashley, Irena, Winter, and Joy, we're all going to celebrate Mother's Day together on a big Mother's Day brunch. That is Sunday, May 12th in D.C. at the very prestigious Howard Theater. To get your tickets, look down the link below, okay? Buy your tickets, and I will see you soon. Hey, Raindrops, I'm back. <laughs> Come on, I'm the blogger and polar guys in front of the TV like <laughs> this. <laughs> Y'all remember polar guys, the blogger with the bangs giving you good old Dua Lipa, baby. I That's am it. back, yes, and I am here with my favorite love and marriage resident correspondent. That's right, Justin Ross. Carlos, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This is the interview of all interviews, right? Because this is like interviewing the show itself. Having a conversation with you, the creator, and the person who literally knows where all of the figurative bodies are buried, right? You know where all of them are buried. So. Oh, you're in the hot seat. The seat is on fire tonight. The seat is on fire tonight, but we're going to we'll turn well, the flame up. Before, well, the seat ain't on fire. I don't have the clap. <laughs> okay, I, I uh -huh. want to make sure people know the seat is not on fire for those reasons. This uh -huh. is 1997 in New York City, going to the Culture Club, child. Shout mm -hmm. out to the hot boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you know, you know, right? Good times, good times. First of all, 1997 when I graduated high school, so let me just say 2000. <laughs> yeah, you got to, you can bring it up. You can bring it up about 13 years. That's okay. You know, you can bring it up to about 2010, 2011. You know. Okay, yeah, but, 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 no, but nostalgia nonetheless. Nostalgia. There you go. There you go. So I don't have yeah. the clap, honey. We we ain't hot like that, but I'm in the hot <laughs> seat. So what you're gonna see different this time is. The way Dustin interviews my cats, which, by the way, you are doing an excellent job. Thank you so much, Carlos. My cats Thank and you. Extracting things from them. What's, what's, what's so good about your conversations with them, I love when they be like, hey, Dustin, we're fans of your <laughs> We love you. We see you on Carlos' YouTube, but we, we <laughs> love some Dustin. I think that's so dope. Me too. It makes me feel good because I love that cast too. Um, so they've been so warm and receptive and such willing participants in the interview space, which makes for a great conversation. You don't ever want somebody to just sit there and clam up and, and not really play with you, you know? So it feels good to have good um, participants in well, the interview. Everybody interviews. wants to play with you, Dustin. Well, I love playing. You know what I'm saying? I, they say I'm an all-star. <laughs> who's, who's they? The people, okay? <laughs> the, what, 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 in New York? In New York, some, yes. But what, what did Tokyo Tony say? Well, yes. Okay. <laughs> See, you starting already, bro. You starting already, I, I, not, I was going to poke fun at you, Pauls. But the <laughs> <laughs> uh, One of these days, I literally am going to create a reality with the king after dark. Because... Mm -hmm. We could do reality with the king after dark, or we could go ahead and get this uh, bachelor style show off the ground and find love for me. I think that'd be an incredible thing over there at Kingdom Reign. Something new. Let's pick them out. I want a lineup. You know what I'm saying? For once, 
let's let's give the lineup a better light, right? You, you people are so used to the lineup being associated with criminals. Let's line up candidates <laughs> instead and pick. You know what I'm saying? Let's do All that. Right. So raindrops, let me know in the comments what type of dating show you want to see Dustin in. That's and right. And Dustin has to tell us his type. Yep. So that we're able to cast this for Dustin. Because yep. you know, apparently winter is single. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, that's the coldest winter ever, okay? Baby, winter, you want to talk winter, about... How about Winter told his name ain't you should, you should have, right? Because yeah. you should have did something different, then maybe your ass would still be around. Winter got rid of him, Carlos. And that's where I really want to talk about in this conversation. We we have an ability to really bring what's going on in the show, because we know there was a long time lapse between when we last were, were so um, honored with the presence of the Love & Marriage DC cast and with this season, so there's been an overlap. I feel like this conversation is a wonderful opportunity for us to kind of close that gap, right? And bring what's being seen on TV in alignment with what's going on right now, per se, right? I think this yeah. is a great opportunity for us to do that. So let's start with one of my favorite parts from this episode. I honestly would love to talk about the whole season, but one of my favorite parts from this episode, this week's episode, was the conversation that Jamie had what conversations I should say that he had with his ex colleagues and yes. then with the therapists and his ex colleagues. This is the stuff that reality TV dreams are made of, Carlos. That's vulnerability. That's you have a black male ex police officer from DC, Washington, DC, one of the um, most storied areas to be a policeman in, right? And he's saying how his time there. Uh, affected him mentally, affected his personal relationships in his life. W was that difficult for you guys to kind of mine from Jamie or was that his idea? How did we get that? Because that was really a gift um, in vulnerability and bravery and something new to the reality landscape. We've never seen that before. So how did you guys get that from Jamie? No, the, the great question. Jamie, the thing about Jamie and Irena, mm -hmm. um, if I can group them together as a couple, they really do give a lot of personal mm -hmm. story to this show. You can say what you want about them. They have fans. They have haters. We all do in life. Mm -hmm. Jamie and Irena understand the reality assignment, and they do such a good job at telling their producers what's going on in their lives, what, what they're going through. And my producers do a good job at making sure we follow the reality, right? So that was all Jamie. Jamie informed us of what it what it's like to be a retired cop. Yes. And the beauty of this is this. That is one job that you have to have the stomach for. You have to really have the stomach, the mental capacity. It's a, I mean, it's a dangerous job to have. You're putting your life on the lines for the community. And I respect that Jamie allowed us to tell that reality because you don't know what life is like for a cop, especially a black one, mm -hmm. especially in the days of D.C. Mm -hmm. where D.C. wasn't what it is now, which is considered mm -hmm. to be, you know, the most wealthy black um, state, town, whatever in the world. So for Jamie to have, you know, decades of employment at that particular um, occupation, I, I, I love the fact that we were able to get inside of his mind. Because think about it. If I'm putting my job on the line, I mean, my life, I'm sorry. If I'm putting my life on the line every single day I wake up and put on that uniform, that does something to you mentally. Yeah. Right? Which is why I advocate for my reality stars and myself. Like, putting mm. ourselves out there to, to do our jobs, Dustin, obviously you included, this ain't for the not week. Not for the week, no. It, it's it, not it, for the yeah. week. I, 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 I really appreciated that scene too as a day one viewer of Love and Marriage DC, right? Because we know that during the first season, Jamie had to be um, sort of vague when it came to his day job and, and that part of his employment and kind of 
um, protected in a certain way. And as soon as he was retired and able to talk more about it, well, now we've opened the cannon on a whole new personal story from him. That's some ongoing personal development, right? Him seeking the therapist, him seeking the counsel and, and camaraderie of his ex uh, colleagues. You know, that's a story that continues and it sounds a lot of, um, uh, shines a lot of insight into like Jamie's parenting style. You know, he said that he would go to work every day and think, I don't want my son to end up in this situation. And that affected the way that he dealt with little Jamie. So I just felt like that was very um, eye opening for us when it came to who Jamie is as a person. And it's actually strikingly akin to Ashley sharing her personal story with her mom and yeah. how even now, right after talking about that on the show and us actually seeing her and her mom have real deep discussions regarding it. There's been another break since the episode yeah. has aired, you know, and we're going to see Ashley be more vulnerable with that. What do you think about, what do you think as the producer of this show, the creator of this show, what do you think about the portrayal of Ashley Silva on this show and the contrast of the strong, um, opinionated, self-assured Ashley that we see when she's with her co-stars Mm -hmm. versus the softer, more vulnerable, you know, really opened up Ashley that we see when she's discussing something personal, like her relationship with her mom. Which one, one of those do you think is closer to the center of Ashley? Both. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it's, both, it's a 50, 50 split. Now this is the thing. Listen, the reason why I've said before I even watch an episode, I said this before the episode, the, the show premiered. I said, y'all got to watch it for this Ashley, honey. She yeah. never, I, I said it. Um, because Ashley, she's like the Whitney Houston song, I'm Every Woman. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? She's, she's everything that you're seeing on television. She is vulnerable. She's very sensitive. She's mm -hmm. a tough broad. She has fought bitches bigger than Clifton, honey. Her words, not mine. Uh, <laughs> she's spicy. She wears her heart on her sleeve. She loves hard. She fights hard. She cries hard. These are the makings of what I consider to be a fantastic reality star. And I've said it from day one, and I will I will say it until Ashley decides to leave the show, right? Uh, which apparently- Which is not happening. Well, apparently I'm seeing tweets. So again, just because people are asking me, Dustin, I tell people, um, when you quit a job, you normally send a letter of resignation. <laughs> yes. Yep. Or, or, as, or as we, as we like to say, you put your two weeks in. Okay. <laughs> okay. You'd be like, girl, I'm, I'm tired of this. this I'm, I'm, I'm finna put my two weeks in. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm taking and you it. You got to say nothing else. When you sell somebody, I put my two weeks in, you know what they mean, child. So I, don't, I haven't received a two weeks notice. Mm -hmm. So all y'all texted me, DMing me about Ashley Winter quitting. I haven't received a letter of resignation in my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> because when you hire somebody, you don't go on Twitter saying you're hired. So yes. I don't think when people quit, they should go on Twitter saying they quit. But yes. again, we shall see. I don't know, child. I stay in the cloth is my, my business. Eat popcorn. Talk to Marlo. <laughs> family, create shows, produce the motherfucker, and, and I keep it moving, child. And every yes. once in a while, I buy a cute pair of shoes. So, <laughs> with all of that being said, that's who you're getting. And I know that Ashley has listened. What I have seen, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been told, um, you know, of this portrayal, right? Um, listen, it's not easy to. This is what I would like for people to understand. Yeah. When you are filming a show, you're filming for three to four months, you know, sometimes shorter. And when things are happening, what we're showing are things that's happening in real time and the process it takes until we until we, we move on from it. So when you're seeing constant episodes of it week to week to week, Unless you instantly get over it, we have no choice but to continue following it. So mm -hmm. there's a portrayal of no one is at home or in the office, honey, with a whiteboard saying, um, we're going to make this person this this season. 
we're going to make this person that this season. No one has a crystal ball in terms of what's going to happen. <laughs> when things happen, we follow it. For example, season one, Winter was arguably the fan favorite. The girls loved Winter. You know, the girls and the guys. And, <laughs> and, and we all did. Winter was great. I think we all can say Winter was the fan favorite season one. Winter, yeah. They loved Winter, right? Now, if you look at Twitter now, people don't like Winter this season. <laughs> If, um, let, let's have a real conversation. Let's do that. Let's do let's it. Let's have a real conversation. So when you talk about portrayal, what I always tell people is the audience picks and chooses what how how they feel. And what I do think happens is sometimes, and, and I'm not saying this about everybody, sometimes the reality star takes on mm -hmm. the the um the attitude or the comments that people may have about them and apply it to themselves one thing i always say and this is why and, and i will say this name i want everybody to look at Letitia pearson on mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's have a real conversation dustin let's do it Letitia pearson another one arguably season one fan favorite for Her sure for sure arguably People love some Letitia Pearson. For sure. Beautiful. Want the best for her and Glenn. Yes, absolutely. Who I spoke to yesterday. I digress. <laughs> I really want to know what you're talking about, but I'm, I'm not going to push. I'm not going to push. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, so um, Letitia had a very tough season this past season. Yeah. A very tough one. People were... People were going ham and cheese on Letitia Pearson. They were on her ass. They were. I mean, yeah. on it, like like a surgeon in the Dominican Republic, baby. <laughs> Very much. Yes. Colombia. Yes, on that okay. ass. Like <laughs> they were. They right? were. Letitia Pearson did not say anything in defense mm -hmm. of her or in offense of her. She mm -hmm. took it like a G. She was like, Okay, y'all mad that I and Latrice had an issue. I know some of y'all on Twitter love some Latrice. I get it. And she never once had this um, this moment where she felt the need to defend herself amongst people who, who don't want to understand you at this time. Absolutely. At that time. They may want to understand you two months from now, mm -hmm. but at that time, Letitia Pearson knew some of y'all don't see it for me. I get it. But guess what? I got brunches to do. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I and, think that's a great perspective. Right. That's a yeah. great perspective, right? Um as a so my personal, my personal policy, right? As a person who works in the business of opinion, I work in media in the business of having an opinion, and that is something that people people can agree or disagree with, right? Um, and so I kind of shut off the intake of those opinions and comments, because I feel like people are going to watch whatever the product is that I'm working on, read whatever the product is that I'm working on, take it in and have an opinion. Anyway, the comment section, um, Twitter, cause we refuse to call it X who in the hell is going to do that. Twitter. Uh, those are, those people are, have the free will to offer and share their thoughts but it does not impact or influence my decision making as a professional. So as a producer, right, in the business of entertainment where people's opinions of your work do matter, how influenced are you by the conversations that are taking place via the fans on Twitter when it comes to things like Zero. casting choices, things like because people assume that you are Geppetto, you know what I mean, with the puppet right. strings hanging from your fingers and creating let's use ashley as an example right these are the conversations that people are having online so i feel like this is the best place for us to address it head on right people uh -uh, dustin with the question shot let's, Go ahead let's do it there. people are accusing you of and by people i'm not speaking of the cast let's be clear on that this is these are the conversations that are taking place in the fandom amongst the fandom okay. they're accusing you of creating a character profile for your cast and say maybe um, um, editing or, or crafting the footage that we see in a way where we feel as if, say, Ashley is the villain okay. or, or you know, you're trying to pit them against each other. 
okay. to clarify it for people who watch these shows and who really are connected to that idea of you doing so. How influenced are you, Carlos, by the conversations that the viewers and fans have about what they see on the show? Good question. All right, hot feet. Let me give me some <laughs> medicine, my penicillin. <laughs> All right, let me fan myself my pear cloth. Okay, <laughs> great, 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 great question. Mm -hmm. What's so unfortunate is when it comes to reality producers, and I, I'm not going to speak for us as a whole, because mm. I will never, just like I would never speak for the entire gay community or for the sure. entire black community, right? So I'm not going to speak for the entire reality producers. I can only speak on me and my team that I hire, mm. um, who I trust. So there is not this sort of device that we have in terms of this person's the villain and we're going to edit them to be the villain. No one is pushing this narrative to make anyone the villain anyone the savior, anyone the girl next door, anyone the happy couple. There isn't this agenda. We're not that bright to, mm -hmm. to, to create this master plan of making one person be something. So what happens is when you cast a show where predominantly these people are either friendly, friends, or know of each other, right? You, what, what you do is you build a show around people who all have different personalities. You can't have a show with five Ashleys. You, mm -hmm, just, you, mm -hmm. can't, you can't have a show with five Winters or five Irenas it, it just, or five Joys. It wouldn't work. So what we, I'll speak for myself, child. When I was casting Love and Marriage DC, and it's no secret that I built this show around Monique Samuels. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, Monique Samuels um, selected people and sent them to me. Mm -hmm. So everybody you see on the show, Monique, Monique herself handpicked them, sent them mm -hmm. to me. So when I saw Quick and Ashley, what I loved about Ashley, I said, "Oh, baby, she's a big character. She says her she 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 means what she says. She says what she means, child." Yeah. That's what you need on any show. You can't have an ensemble show. Bold and bougie, we got Tamika Foster Raymond. Yes. Means what she says, says what she means. Nene Leagues. Um, on Love and Match Huntsville, Melody. Means what she right. says, says what she means. On Bell Collective is Marie Moreau, baby. Yes, Marie. Yes, yes. yes. So get every your weight show, up. Yeah. You said what? Marie said, get your weight up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop yeah. talking, right? Get your weight up. That's right. <laughs> I clock in. I mm -hmm. clock in. I love me some Marie Barreau. So, yes. and then when I saw Irena and Jamie, I thought Irena was this beautiful, classy, sophisticated, black excellence. She like grand dom ish type, like just so mature and so mm -hmm. so regal. Mm -hmm. So follow me here. So you got. Ashley, who is a force to be reckoned with, yes, you place her with somebody who is regal. Then you yeah. have Monique that is just who, who really wants people to like have a conversation and get along, and she's funny. And then when when Monique gave us Winter, um, again at the time Winter was with her ex, but I thought Winter was just like very bubbly and yep. and whatever. So. There's no agenda in terms of typecasting, but what you see when you cast personalities like they do in The View, you can't mm -hmm. have five Whoopi Goldbergs, five Joy Behars. You, 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 I love you, but you can't have five Alyssas. Like you need, yeah, yeah. right. So that's the that's what we do. So there's no agenda at all, despite okay. what you read. And secondly, I didn't. I love. I love my fans. I love Black Twitter. Um, I don't consult them when I cast people, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to consult them when I fire somebody or when when, when mm -hmm. it's time for someone to, to be let go. I don't, right. I don't, yeah, because the thing is this, you're only as good as your last episode. So mm -hmm. here we talk about winter, arguably fan favorite first season. Mm -hmm. This season, not so much based on the tweets. That doesn't mean I look at winter any differently. Yeah. Yeah. Or, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah.
Yeah, I, and I, I think that's a great point to make. Um, and I'm glad that you actually cleared that up because I feel like specifically you when it comes to reality producers um, that we are familiar with, because a lot of producers stay behind the scenes and aren't necessarily subject to, you know, accountability per se from the fans. Uh, I feel, feel like you're in a unique position because our the fans and the audience of this show, um, they love to hold you accountable for their displeasure or distaste with certain things that they see from the cast members, right? And it's almost like they demand action from you based on their feelings for the cast. What do you want to let the fans know about um, their feelings of you maybe protecting certain cast members per se by not holding them accountable in whatever way the fans want you to. What do you have to say about that conversation? Cause we see that uh, circulating a lot. Maybe Carlos yeah. is protecting this cast member or that cast member. What do you have to say about that, Carlos? And like you said, they think I'm like this Geppetto where I'm pulling strings and I have this power mm -hmm. to make people do whatever I want them to do. Mm -hmm. I'm like this mad magician. So because because no one knows exactly how the sausage is made. They're like, no, he must be protecting this person or he must be villain villainizing this person or whatever the case may be. And the reason why I don't give it any attention is because it ain't true. So I don't protect anybody, if anything, but this was so funny. I and I'll end with this. The ones who you swear up and down that I'm villainizing is the one I talk to the most and talking them off the ledge in the sense of like, it's going to be okay. One quick story. Me and mm -hmm. Crystal, me and Crystal Renee, who is Neo's ex-wife. Who I love on Bold, Bold and Bougie, by the way. Love, 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 love Crystal on Bold and Bougie. Continue, please. I just wanted to put that out there. Guess what she said to me before we ended filming the season? What did she say? Y'all trying to make me look like a villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm mad. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, 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 I'm fat, 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 fat. Me. Because I don't do text. <laughs> Hi. Oh, hey. Good morning. I mean, uh, nope. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. So long story short, I said to her, you did not even see the first episode. You don't know how it's going to end. The sad part is you are yourself. And once you see yourself and 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 you see how people respond to you, then call me. Yeah. And she is one who arguably is one of the fan favorites of Bold and Bougie. And, and I'm only mm -hmm. saying that because she and I had a, a, a talk about this yesterday mm -hmm. doing press. Um because people over listen sometimes people overreact because they 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 care so much about what this person says what that person says and what i encourage all my stars is how about you sometimes look at yourself and say huh i could have handled that differently i've learned from this let me just take this as a learning lesson and move on yeah yeah, sometimes. So what do you think that about simple. that? Because you look, I want to ask you a question. Because you're a fan of the show and you're watching the show this season and you're seeing mm -hmm. what's been happening even in this episode. How do you, as a fan of the show, how do you feel when you see your your favorites or you know constantly, constantly, um, go on the defense and and feel like they have to get a hit of stuff? Do you, as a fan of the show and the fan of the cast? Do you like that? No, I don't like it. But I feel like for some people, it's a necessary part of them settling into their groove as on camera talent, as reality stars, because there's going to continue to be conversation, opinions thrown at you, um, judgments, accusations made, 
towards you as you further your career in reality TV. And sometimes you have to work through the process of understanding how to ignore that and prioritize information, essentially, right? Prioritize what deserves your attention and what does not. For some people that comes natural, right? You just mentioned a great example in Letitia Pearson, where she understood that, you know, she could tune that noise out and focus on the story and just let it play out. She didn't feel a need to defend herself. Other people have to learn things in a different manner, right? Maybe by spending time out there, you know, I call it windmilling on Twitter in the Twitter streets, right. you know, and doing that until they realize that that may not get them where they think it will. I think sometimes you feel a desire and it's natural, right? When you hear people make uh, act false accusations about you and your personality, your first feeling is to say, hey, I need to defend that or hey, let me defend myself. And sometimes you have to insert a moment of pause there where you consider what's going on, zoom out, which is one of my favorite things to do, look at it for what it really is and understand that it's not worth your time. It's it's, it's actually a, a futile effort when you're trying to sway public opinion in that way. These people have taken in the content that you've participated in and developed an opinion. The things that you say off camera, very rarely, There's a. it's almost like the... Um, that percentage ratio for antibacterial products is 99.9% .9 chance you're not going to change their mind. It's a very yeah. small margin that you will. So it's it's essentially not worth the time. Some people get that. Some people don't. It's not entertaining. As a fan, I can tell you that it's not entertaining. There's not a, a gotcha, aha moment at the end of it where opinions or thoughts will be changed. You're just now engaging these people and they're yeah. in sort That's of what they validating, want. They, validating they what like they this. say. Refresh. Yeah, yeah. Like and they're very excited. Company. They're excited. Again, sometimes you have to zoom out and remember there's a yeah. large barrier between the talent and the audience. And that barrier is the television. So the minute you remove that barrier and engage in a way that is maybe not um, the most worth your while, right? It just yeah. kind of makes you more accessible and they're accessible to it all. So I think a great practice is, is you know, that ninja training of not responding. I don't know if you have to turn comments off maybe or, or not you know, go on Twitter when it's not live tweet. You know, I saw that um, like Ashley and Wynn are doing their recaps, which I think is great. You know, leave it there. Yeah. Commodify yeah. your conversation. Commodify your commentary um, for the show in one home instead of throwing darts at all of these people who are not even necessarily involved and are actually fortunate to have that much access to the cast. Have that sort of, you know, person to person contact and communication. That's uh, you're giving away something of value when you engage in that way. People pay for meet and greet tickets. People pay for one on ones. Hell, they're paying for cameo. You know what I'm saying? So there's there's a yes, there's a honey. there's a value there that's being lost when you willfully engage in conversation about things that essentially are none of their business. I think it's great when people form opinions, whether it be that you like something, dislike something. I don't want to say someone because as fans, we forget it's about the story and the show, not necessarily the people. And it's not personal. And so I think we all just need to develop that separation. Just put a, what I like to call a moat between your feelings yeah. and the entertainment that you're taking in. Cause it's literally for your entertainment. This is supposed to be fun, you guys. So I, I you know, when it gets dark, Maybe that part, that 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 responsibility of the darkness is on us all, not just the cast, right? Maybe we as fans should back up a little bit and oh, enjoy yeah. the show and Absolutely. watch the story play out. How yeah. much, since we're talking about these conversations, right? How important is it to you, the things that, how important to you, to you, I should say, are the things that go on amongst your cast when the cameras are down? Specifically in the case of Love and Marriage DC, We've seen that with the, the time lapse between the two seasons and what we're seeing now, there's a visceral reaction taking place from some of the cast members toward what they're seeing play out on the TV that they've already lived through and also the reactions of the fans to that. As the executive producer of, of this and as the man at Kingdom Reign Entertainment, how important to you are the things that take place off camera? I don't I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. But that's also the reason why we have reunions. And, mm -hmm. and you know this being a fan of reality, 25% mm -hmm. um, of the reunions are off season stuff that happens once the cameras wrap. I mean, the show wrap 
or once the show is airing and we reference tweets, right? So look, I don't like it because it's what you said. This is supposed to be fun and entertainment and real. Yeah. I have, and Dustin, you stop me when I'm wrong. And the reason why I keep bringing myself into it is because the reason why I think, wow, how, how amazing that my cast of all my shows, their boss, right? is somebody who's also in front of the camera who gets, they see me on the shade room. They see yeah. me on neighborhood talk. They So the fact that they can say like, we have somebody that can kind of like help us navigate through this. And I have done that for all of them. Mm -hmm. All of them, right? Mm -hmm. And the one thing I've always said to them is, what you said is so key. You you're in a very privileged position, right? To be able to live your life in front of the cameras for the world to see, be judged, all good child, but also use it to your benefit by um, having products or restaurants or books or um, fashion or hair, whatever whatever venture that you have. Like how amazing is that? Like that like that's so amazing, but when the audience who are your consumer mm -hmm. when they feel like you are nasty towards them they don't want to invest in you and when you're too accessible you are not as you're you're not as um worthy mm -hmm. of people coming to your tour like mine reality the king tour thank you I'm having meet and greets. I, I was I was doing press yesterday, Dustin. And you know me, I don't go outside. That's why Dustin yeah. was like, I'm in New York. I'm going to take you out. All the time. And I'm always like, I'm scared. <laughs> so anyways, I don't, I only respond to positive tweets because I yeah. think it's so effed up that you have so many people who love you and you ignore them, but you respond to the ones who hate you. That's, that's, that's big, weird energy to me. Yeah. I only respond to my raindrops. And when I meet people like I did yesterday, it it's like, oh my God. Cause the thing is this, we all have a side to us where we, we could clap back and read and all that stuff. Yeah. But when people meet me, they're like, you are everything that you give off on camera. For sure. And and they want to support you. My VIP on my tickets are selling out. Because people are like, we want to meet Carlos and see him and touch. But don't touch me, child. But no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> all that. Right, but touch you know, me in the morning. Of, Go ahead. Right. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, Diana Ross. Touch me. Okay. And retouch. Okay. <laughs> don't be afraid no. to touch. Monifa's touch. Look, I'm with Jeffrey Osborne's touch. Last night, I held a stranger. Okay. <laughs> that seems to be your weekend activities, Dustin. Well, and today is Friday. It's just getting started. But nonetheless, this ain't about me, okay? It's about you, Carlos. And I think you deserve flowers for being so forward-facing with your cast and your work in general. I think Thank that you. that is a level of protect of protection um, towards your cast that we don't see a lot when it comes to executive leadership and entertainment. Um, the questions and, and a lot of the opinions are hurled directly at you um, mm -hmm. in addition to the cast, but... There's still that barrier of you that is placed in front of your cast as a protection. Like you said, for all your shows, you talk about the shows, you talk about them in forums that have comment sections for people to respond. Uh, you welcome comments on Twitter. You engage with the audience. And I think that takes a little bit of the heat off the cast in a way that I think is admirable, man. So I just want to give you your flowers for that because I don't know if Thank anybody you. ever has. You deserve that. Um so enough about all that internet street stuff. Let's get back to the show, right? I want to talk about the Duncans. We love Shirella. We love, is it now, I, we get a few different names. We get Shirella and we get right. Shirella. I know Ashley says Shirella and it kind of stuck because it's unique. I what say Shirella name? too. Shirella, okay, we'll call her Shirella. Every dad. time Ashley gives a name like Clifton. It sticks. It sticks. So mm -hmm. I call. I only call him Clifton. And he'd be like, Carlos. <laughs> um, I love Clifton, by the way. And yes. she called Sherelle Sherella. 
that's the only name I go by, child. When I when I, when I talk to her, it's Shirella. So why? So are we? So we we're, we're interested in the Duncans, right? I mean, there's obviously you know Shirella has an incredible personality. She talks about sex a lot and freely, which is always fun. Um, and she has a great rapport with the cast in general. You know, on this cabin trip, we got to see a lot more of the Duncans, and we saw that even in situations that were uncomfortable for most of the cast. Shirella was still being honest, you know, in the moment with her feelings towards the situation between her husband, Black, and Joy, um, and just very engaging with all the cast. Is there a reason that we have not seen more of the Duncans? There's been tons and tons of rumors about them being um, uh, withheld from certain filming scenarios because of other requests from other cast members. Uh, we, cast there, members. There's been, you know, we're talking at this point, right? No, Which is a oh, real conversation. This episode is about me addressing it because, because yeah. It's, but I, this, I don't know what what what, what requests are people saying. So people are are assuming, right, that you are keeping the Duncans out of the group scenes. We haven't seen the Duncans um, more than the amount that we have because there's been a request from other cast members, allegedly Joy and Cliff Tyne, um, that they don't want to participate in filming with the Duncans. And that's why we haven't seen them more, right? I think this is the perfect opportunity for you to clear all that up, unmuddy those waters, right? I unmuddy the waters. That's right. So why have we not? I love seeing the Duncans on screen. I do too. Uh, I think there's so much fun and a great addition to the cast. What is the definition of the Duncans' role on Love and Marriage DC? The same one Winter had season one. They are friend ups. Okay, friend ups. And so that is that why. We haven't seen as much of them as we have the other couples. That would explain it, correct? It's the also the reason why you don't see them in the main titles. So mm -hmm. because they are friends of again, um, and I'm gonna answer this this uh, this this alleged rumor that Joy and Clifton said we ain't filming with them, and I said, oh my gosh, I do work for y'all, so right. I'm gonna. <laughs> I, I I haven't been producing reality for 20 years, and. And was able to have Nene Leakes and Sheree in the same room. So guess what? Shit. I'm just <laughs> focused on other people's shows to even allow y'all. Oh, whatever you want to do, run amok in the palace, Mama D. Okay. <laughs> so let me rewind. Yes. Just like Winter was a friend of season one, and a lot all of the cast except Monique. Mm -hmm. Used to read Winter season one and say. <laughs> Which to me is fun, Shay. I think it's funny. Mm -hmm. you, you ain't even in the main titles. You ain't a main cast member. You a friend to the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah right? Because, mm -hmm. you know, there's something about being in the main titles when you get to do this. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's right. That's like, right. It does something to you. So mm -hmm. just like Winter season one was a friend of who did a spectacular job. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you what Winter did season one, then I'm going to get to Sherelle and Black. Mm -hmm. Winter knew that, okay, I have to find a way to not be on an island, okay? And what Winter did that I think is genius that I don't think she gets credit for because she's a, she's a low-key assassin. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? A smooth blade, yes. Hey, okay, smooth blade. Mm -hmm. West types. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So she was able to cultivate these these friendships slightly on the cabin trip. Was it a no not cabin? Was that was a cabin? They went to Monique's one of Monique's four homes. Right, right. One of her other her, her, was it a cabin? One of her other homes. One it was other a, homes. Yeah. And and once they met her ex, the, the girls were like. Oh, you're not so bad. And they, and they sing that song with her. Find my papers, mm -hmm, get my divorce mm -hmm, left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the rest is history. Um, and then we said, wow, you really did a good job cultivating your relationships. The reunion was a little icy and mm -hmm, dicey, but mm -hmm. let's figure this out. And she had she was able to form friendships. This is the first time you're seeing Sherelle in black mm -hmm. because we again did the winter thing, which is they're friends of, right? Um 
when it came to this accusation that we are, Joy Clifton has not, who do y'all think? I am Carlos motherfucking King. Yeah, yeah. Anybody can tell me I don't want to film with this person and I'm going to say, okay. Or don't bring this person around me. Okay. If that was the case, why, if Joy and Clifton said that to me and, and, and I was that weak to accept it, why would they pull that card on Sherelle and Black when it would make more sense for Joy and Clifton to pull that card on Ashley? Mm -hmm. It doesn't, the math ain't mathing. One plus one does equal two. Mm -hmm. So if the end and subsequently, if that was the case, why are they on a couple's trip with Joy and Clifton? They yeah. went on the couple's trip. They have interviews. Yeah. We get to see, we saw them in tonight's episode. Well, we saw Sharella in tonight's episode with the girls. It was Winter, Ashley, Irena, and Sharella. Yeah. What do y'all want me to do? Put up a motherfucking flag and say, hey, she's here. Yeah. Make sure y'all time code with. I love Sharella. I love Black. They are great as friends of. I have no mm -hmm. issues with them. If they have issues with me, once again, unless I get a, a, a email that's notarized that says two weeks notice or mm -hmm. whatever, I don't care what people say about me on 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 um, the Twitter. And again, I want to say this: Joy and Clifton has not one time mm -hmm. ever came to production and made any demands. The only demand that Joy and Clifton has ever made mm -hmm. ever on this show was Clifton asking for a day off because he had back surgery. Y'all mm -hmm. are crazy. If mm -hmm. y'all think anybody on my show can tell me who they can and cannot film with, there is a place called the unemployment office. And I suggest <laughs> you put out an application on a, on a pad and get your number two pencil and fill out a form for your mental IQ to go work at another business. Absolutely. Uh, with the view towards resolution, right? Because yeah. we and, and we just gonna leave that right there because it really ain't shit else to say. That that if that doesn't clear it up for you all that have <laughs> had those made those assumptions, then I at this point there's nothing left. Uh now Arena and Joy. Right. Or not Arena and Joy, excuse me, Arena and Ashley, right? Yes. So we've seen, obviously, we've seen what's taking place on the show. We've seen small cracks in their friendship with the D on it, right? We've seen um, opinions and views expressed on the show that kind of um, are indicating some sort of breakdown in their relationship. But then we've seen what's going on now with. Ashley and Arena both, you know, offering commentary on the show in real time as the episodes are airing this season and both very clearly stating that there is no relationship amongst them currently. The anchors of the show, do we have a plan to bring harmony to the cast so that we can have more of Love and Marriage DC? Because we want it. Ashley and Arena are season one anchors of this show and integral to the success of this show. Both incredibly beautiful, successful, smart black women, both incredible, incredible mothers, both very honest on this show. We need them as fans of the show. We need both of these ladies to be in harmony. Do you see a space in the future where that can exist for the current cast that we have right now on Love and Marriage DC? Yes. Um, yes. It breaks my heart. And I said this to both of them. Mm -hmm. um, I spoke to both of them privately and publicly um, that they are in this dire place in their friendship. I don't like it. The fans don't like it. Mm -hmm. um, and what's so unfortunate is to me, and again, it's always going to be my opinion, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it is so deep that they can't come to an agreement of, you know what, we addressed it, let bygones be bygones. And I'm gonna tell you why. Who would have thought Winter and Ashley would be besties? 
And I'm going to end it at that. But I'm going to tell you this much. In terms of happiness and harmonious situations, my live tour that I'm celebrating these wonderful mothers, as you name, on Mother's Day, Sunday, May 12th, I'm honoring the Love and Marriage DC ladies, the main cast. Mm -hmm. the, the point of this live podcast, this isn't, I'm not naturally none, and this ain't Baddies Potomac. This That's ain't right. Baddies DC, okay? I'm not having this live um, this live show with my beautiful ladies to be nothing short of a celebration of the show. And my hope is that these beautiful Black women who I know and love dearly and me, that we're all able to celebrate the fans who spent, who spent money to mm -hmm. see us, who, who are taking time away possibly from their kids to come hang out with us at three o'clock. Cause it's going to be a, um, it's a mother's day brunch mm -hmm, mm -hmm. theater. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got a DJ food, drinks, all that. I want us to have fun. And my thing is if Bravo Khan can have these beautiful housewives who some of them hate each other. Mm -hmm. If those women can show up to Bravo Khan and have those panels, for the fans and they behave themselves and they just they have a good time i believe that my love and marriage dc ladies can do the same thing and i'm looking forward to honoring them you know i've heard before they're the stepchildren of of the love and marriage franchise right Good shit so, not this season <laughs> oh no they're doing no this this oh what dc, DC has shown up and shown out for and sure and here i am I'm giving them the stage because that's how much I'm proud of this season. I love this show. I'm putting my money where my mouth is and I'm saying, mm -hmm. ladies, I don't know what else to do for y'all, but I'm laying out the red carpet. So I saw that to say, to answer your question, my goal is just for us for the hour and a half, maybe two, that we're gonna be there for it to be happy, harmonious and funny. Mm -hmm. And just a celebration of this show. This show, uh, I'm not going to get in trouble by the network because all I'm going to say is, all I'm going to say is this show, as of now, is... Hey, we love to see it. We love to see I, I, it. I'll, I'll, I'll just, I'll leave it at that. Reboot to the lines. It's... um, <laughs> Wonderful. Give it up. Give it up. Let's clap for this season, right? This entire season. Season is good. I I listen. And and one thing that I did see that I'm like, I be trying to tell them, child, but you know, I I love when the fans are like, mm, we don't like it when y'all fight on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. we ain't getting none of that. So y'all ain't listen, y'all ain't paying all that money to see that. You know, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a grown conversation. It's gonna be fun, and and come out with your mama, okay? Yeah. And let's have a good old Mother's Day brunch. Well, I love to hear that, Carlos, and I, I think that's a great way to tie a bow on this, man. That sort of unity and harmony, and you fostering that is what it's all about, man. So I love to see that. Yeah, so I think that's incredible, Carlos, and it's just a testament to the type of strong producing that you've been doing over there, brother. Um, I think it's a wonderful thing. Don't make me get on the Acela because I will and come right on down to D.C. for that show and see that because we got to do all we can do. Right. To, to this. I will. We have to encourage this harmony amongst this this incredible cast of beautiful black talent. OK, who has stolen the show. Let's just call it what it is. Love and Marriage D.C. came through and just snatched the veil off of this whole thing. And they are doing the damn thing with this season. They deserve all the support, all the flowers, all the encouragement. And that's that's all the cast, the, the women and their husbands and significant others. You know, <laughs> um, they've, they've all contributed to what made a great season. And we just want to thank you for that. We're excited to see what's next, Carlos. And thank you for your honesty in this conversation. I'm sure that the fans that have been waiting for certain things to kind of be hit on the head and addressed specifically, I think we definitely did that in this conversation. So thank you for yes. that, Carlos. Yes, and I will only do it with you. Well, do that with you. I will only... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all see, here we go. This this is what they're about to be tweeting about now. You know him and Dustin. <laughs> hey, if you oh, think that Aspen coming looking for me, 
I ain't do oh, it. No. I'm gonna tell you right now. Let them know, African sir, sir African. I didn't. It was not me. It's the goddamn comments. I did not do you it. You know what, say. somebody? <laughs> what if the bait and switch, Dustin, is that you're the African <laughs> I've been talking about? Uh oh, Brian, good because I am African American. Okay, and that's gonna be that's gonna be love and marriage. DC, Dustin, and Carlos. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, my brother. Thank you so much, man. One thing about it, we're going to laugh, Carlos. We're going to laugh. See, this is what happens. We won't laugh there. We can throw shade. Yeah. You, know, you may want to throw a, a little shoulder in a, in a suite at a wizard day. You know, you, wanna, you, you yeah. may want to, you know, knock if you buck. But okay. at the end of the day, let's get back to having some fun. So thank yes. you, Dustin. Thank you Absolutely. so much, man, for taking time out to do this. I will only only do this with you, so thank you. Absolutely. Love you, brother. We'll talk to you next time, man. All right.